right, what's up everybody? So what we're gonna be doing today is I'm tired of having cable steering on my pontoon boat. Um, it is fine if you're just idling, but uh, when you pick up speed, it's actually difficult to turn and it's just a pain. I'm tired of fooling with it. So what I've done is I ordered, um, I know kind of the standard and what comes on most boats is gonna be Sea Star. Well, I've looked and priced Sea Star. It was roughly, I think it was $1,100 for the basic kit. And then it was, um, was it 1300 or something like that if you want to tilt? Um, I found a, another brand that was a good deal cheaper called Baystar. And it's one of those things like, I believe you get what you pay for to a certain extent. Uh, I found even cheaper models. I found brands and all for three or four hundred dollars. I don't know if I trust that. I'd hate to get out on the water and be stuck and or have hydraulic leaks or whatever. So I went with Baystar, and Baystar, I think I paid, I believe it was six fifty. So it was almost half the price of the Sea Star, but it's I think it's you know it's gotten pretty good reviews and. Seems like it'll be a pretty good system. Uh, it's made for up to 150 horsepower. And what I'll do is uh, I'll get it open in a minute and show you all the components. And I'm not gonna do, this isn't gonna be a step-by-step -step video of me installing it on my pontoon boat, but I'll show you kind of little progress points and things that I'm doing. And I'll let you know of anything that I run into during the install. I've never done anything like this before. I've never installed uh, power steering on a boat. So this would be the first time trying it out. Uh, hopefully everything goes smooth. It doesn't look like it's too difficult. The only thing that I saw that people seem to run into will be the um, where the pump itself or steering shaft and all that, whatever you want to call that piece uh, where it installs at the console sometimes it doesn't always fit properly because it might not be cut out to that size i think it's three inch sometimes you might have less sometimes you might have more already cut out so we'll get to that part and and i'll show you what i have whenever i get to it the first thing i'm gonna start with is disconnecting the cable off the engine and i'll show you that part then i'm gonna disconnect it up at the console and uh, then i'll pull the cable through where it runs through over the top of the right tune and then we'll unbox the hydraulic uh, steering and the base star and get it run through. So basically it's just the pump that goes on the steering wheel. It's two 20 foot hoses. And then it's the like hydraulic cylinder that goes back on the outboard itself. And basically, I mean, to my understanding is you get hydraulic fluid as you turn one way or the other, it goes through whichever hose and then just pushes the cylinder that direction. So it's not a very complicated thing. It's pretty simplistic. Um, I wish, I don't know why all pontoon boats don't come with it. I don't know why it's like an option, but you know, it is what it is. So we'll start taking a look at, uh, at some of this and start taking it apart. Okay, so here we have the old Evinrude, which is now no more, but whatever, you know, that's a whole different discussion topic. I hate to see the brand go. They've been around forever. Uh, I'm not too keen on the two-stroke deal. You know, I almost prefer the four-stroke, but I think I talked about in my pontoon boat, the video that I did about it. Uh, I went with this boat just because I got the best deal on it. So anyway, so we're going right here and basically for the current cable steering and that cable runs there we want to and i've already started taking this off this nut we want to take this bar off so undo that screw and then we'll undo the screw here and then we'll take this loose as well as i think that comes loose as well i think you unscrew it and then this piece here should just pull through and that should be all we have to do to remove it on this side let's see here show you this side of it so this cable it's a hard cable 
and then it runs if you can see that through that kind of channel there and you know as it's run through the channel i don't know how much you can actually see in there it's got a lot of bends and all to it i don't know if that's why it's so stiff this boat is a 2019 model and when i got it out in the water the first time it was so stiff i took it back to the dealer and they took it out on the water and they actually replaced the cable and uh it really didn't get any better so they said you know it's the best they could do with it so i just it's, it's not you know absolutely just horrible it's just i'm not pleased with it not happy with it so i'm gonna change it out okay let me get some of this unbolted and then i'll show you what i've got okay so i got this steering cable out and i don't know if you might not be able to see any of it on this but i pulled it out and it has water dripping off of it or out of it so that may very well be part of my problem you know you can see it all inside there you can see it the water sitting inside on top of the grease like bubbled up so maybe that's part of the problem with the steering maybe it wouldn't sealed up well and just had water inside there so anyway i just wanted to show you here's of course the arm that attached it and here's on one side it's kind of like a nut but it's rubber and it, i mean i guess it acts just as a seal but it was only like finger tight on there. I didn't have to use any pliers or anything to take it out. So maybe that's the whole issue. I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not really a, a mechanic or anything. I'm just kind of guessing at it. I can't help but think that that's not good, but anyway, we'll go back around. So there's the steering cable hanging out of the backside. And next I'm gonna take it loose from the uh, steering column and then I'll pull it through here okay so as far as the top goes it looks pretty simple here I guess we'll just take that lock nut out and then I had to clean the dirt out of here I love dirt doppers it was all filled with mud and dead insects and it looks like there's just a couple Phillips head in there and then that'll come off and then I'll go up under and show you what that looks like and we'll see if there's anything we need to take apart in there. Okay, up under here, looks like we've got like the steering, I guess, gearbox that has the cable running through it. So the top cable is just plugged off, so that bottom one's the only one we're interested in. And I guess from under here, we just need to pull that pin out, I guess, and hopefully it'll release out. Um, I see that like hex fitting there. I'm not sure if we have to align something at all, but I'll take a look at it and figure it out. And when I get it off, I'll let you know if there's anything special to it. But I just wanted to show you kind of up under here. And then of course the cable, sorry, but I'll drop the phone, um, runs down to the floor there and then up under the boat. So it should be pretty easy to pull through. Okay, so this is just a real quick side note. Getting this steering wheel off, because it is keyed and basically pressed on when you tighten it down with that lock nut, it is a pain. It's the first time I've ever taken one off. It was a pain to get off there. So I talked to somebody else that knows about boats and I found out what, what he said to do um, and I'll go ahead and tell you this, if you see on my steering wheel, you see these like little scuff places and all. So what I did, I thought since it was pressed on, I rode to O'Reilly's and I bought one of these claw deals and tried to pull it off with that. And it just ended up kind of tearing the plastic around it because there's not a real good place for it to bite. So I talked to one of my buddies that deals with these things and he said what you do is well, i'll set it up here what you do is you slide up against it and you put constant pressure on it with your knees and then he said use like a you know a piece of metal i used a half inch extension 
and put it down in there and then you take a hammer and you hit it while you're putting constant pressure on it with your knees and after doing that for a while i finally got it off so just wanted to you know give you a some of my thoughts on that and you know when i run into issues especially i like to try to put them on video in case they help anybody else looks like it's going with this hey yeah, it's a half moon key in there to keep it from turning but uh anyway moving on i'll get the screws out of here and we'll keep going here's just a quick shot after you get the steering wheel off so it looks like you know you take out your three bolts here and then uh, you got three smaller ones on the inside to completely remove that, I guess, cable box or whatever inside. And then after I get that loose, then I'll get the cable disconnected from it and start pulling it through. And like I said, I got to measure this to make sure the new hydraulic pump will fit inside it. If not, I guess I'll be doing some cutting. I think, you know, and you can see where this is wood inside it too. And then it's got... I guess the whatever fiberglass or vinyl that is, I'm not sure. Um, I'm assuming all these boats come in without that, and then I guess the dealers put the steering wheel in that they want. I'm assuming. I might not be right about that. It might come from the factory with us on there, but uh, anyway, that, that might be a three inch hole. I, I'm hoping that's going to fit without me having to do any cutting because the only concern I have I don't mind cutting wood and stuff like that jigsaw or Dremel or whatever but this stuff whatever it is when I've done other drilling on and all it, it cracks really easily so I'm not sure if you need like certain bits for it or what but anyway moving on all right so here's the gearbox and basically that end and that part of the cable, that wound cable, was inside here. And you had to take out a pin. And then after that, if you can see the little hole right there on top, I had to take uh, a screwdriver and push that in to get re to release. And then that cable just pulled out. So then I kind of fed it through the floor and there's the whole thing. And I went around the back and just pulled the whole thing through. So, I mean, it was a one man job. So, so far I've done all of it by myself. Now what I've read on the instructions, the new hydraulic steering, uh, it says it takes two people to bleed it. So I'll try to find some help for that, I'm sure. But anyway, that's what the old cable looks like and the old cable box. Just a piece of crap. I never will buy a boat with a mechanical cable again I would uh, advise staying away from them I, older boats I've had like fishing boats and things like that um, I've had problems with them seizing up and different issues with uh, mechanical steering lines and always had to take it back you know and get it worked on and you know it's 100 150 200 dollars a time and they always seem to seize up and screw up so uh, Moving forward, I, I won't be doing any more mechanical steering. But anyway, um, we'll take a look at the uh, the new Baystar power steering or hydraulic steering, whichever you want to call it. So this is how the new system came in. And I guess I've somewhat told you wrong in the beginning of the video. So when I searched online, I found C-Star and then I found Baystar. And like I said, the C Star was over $1,000. And Baystar was 600 and something dollars. But it says C Star Solutions. So I don't know for sure. So nobody quote me on this. But I mean, I'm assuming that Baystar is made by C Star. And it maybe it's just a, a lower grade or quality of what they put out. That's just going to be my assumption, my opinion. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how it really is. Um, it's just the search and I did. This was kind of the middle price range. Um, I saw some kits for $300, but you know, just didn't want to go the cheapest route. So I ordered this one. So this is what we've got. 
the HK4200A-3. C-Star Solutions. So, yeah, I guess it's the same thing. All right. Um, maybe the other one's just a better quality. I have no idea. We will... Let me stop this for a second, and I'll get it opened, and uh, we'll check it out together. What's in the box? I hadn't opened this yet. All right. Box was a little bit beat up when it came in, but no big deal. I'm sure it's all packaged well enough so that it didn't incur any damage. All right, so manual. Um, I'm going to flip through this kind of quickly uh, so that you can just see what's in it. And, you know, if anybody wants to pause the video to see actual instructions, you can. Or you can skip through all together. But just in case anybody's interested. There's a template. I guess I'll cut this out. Three inch diameter holes. So I still have to measure mine. And like I said, if you want to pause the video at any time to uh, read all of this in better detail, feel free. Tools, hole saw, 5 sixteenths drill bit, wrenches, half inch and 5 eighths, and then other wrenches you need, 9 sixteenths, half, 5 eighths, 11 sixteenths, one and an eighth. Nope. Skip a page. Okay. So before I actually uh, get into it, I'll kind of read through all of this. This is how to mount it to the different types of engines. And then that just goes through all the different types. Purging. That's one of those things you can probably find these instructions online, but you know, just in case, if anybody has any questions, then you can pause at whatever page you want to look at. Oh, it even has some maintenance. After 20 hours, then every 100 hours. I guess it'd be maybe like changing up fluid and stuff like that. troubleshooting so I'm sure that's pretty much the end of it okay what do we have in the box two quarts of C star hydraulic steering fluid also works in base star that's interesting I mean I like I said my only thought is it it must be just a lower grade maybe okay so Two 20-foot 
hoses. Then we have hydraulic cylinder that goes back on the engine and then for the steering itself Basically, all this is is a pump. You turn the steering wheel and it pumps fluid through one hose, forcing this cylinder in one direction. Turn it the other way, same thing. And there's the fill lines. And that's what the kit comes with. So next, I will start mounting it on the boat and I will do some clips of video kind of progress things and I will stop at any um, anything that I might, you know, if I run into anything or any difficulties in installing it, then I'll definitely stop and kind of show you what's going on. But this is what we have in the kit. So I didn't do a lot of video in, in between the actual installation of this thing. Um, there's really nothing to this. The only difficult parts that I had was really trying to figure out how to run the line and I don't know how good a job I did, but I'll show you what I did. So here's the, the unit on the back. So basically this was really simplistic. You basically turn it one way, you take these caps off and open the bleeder valve and you let it, you keep, have somebody, it takes two people. You have somebody keep turning the steering wheel and it just pumps the fluid through and you wait till you don't see any air bubbles and then you tighten it back up. And then you turn it the other way and do the same thing. So very simplistic. Um, this whole thing installed very easily. I uh, didn't run into any issues. Um, Let's see, I'll show you from the other side. Okay. So this is it. I ran the hoses. Um, and you will need, basically you need a just a regular pipe cutter to uh, cut them to length. You know, I was kind of, I didn't know exactly how much to leave. I tried to turn the engine both ways and make sure that I had plenty and then uh, just zip tied it there at the bottom and I'll show you what I did on the other side. Basically I had these little brackets that were you know in uh, electrical boxes that I had and then I put like a velcro around them to keep them from getting pinched and I bolted that one down there. I bolted this one here and then all the way through the tunes up to uh, the steering wheel itself. It says like zip tie them every, or connect them or secure them every two feet. So that's basically what I did. I still got to do a little more uh, finagling with my wiring, get it all hung up there a little better. I had it all secured, some of it I had tied onto the uh, steering cable. And uh, when I took that out, it loosened some of it. All right, let me go up top and show you what I got. So one of the main differences in this versus the uh, cable is the cable came out maybe like two inches, if that. And you can see this comes a lot further out, this hydraulic pump. But there it is. You cut out your three inch hole, which I already had. You get a 5 16 drill bit, put the template on there, drill it out and then just slide it into place. I'll show you up under it what it looks like. And then basically when you're bleeding it, you take this cap off, you put a hose on it, and you have to have somebody sitting here holding the quartz of hydraulic fluid the entire time while they're turning the wheel. And you just have to make sure you don't have any air in the line. So, I mean, it definitely takes two people to bleed it kind of nicked it right there when I was trying to get it in and uh, 
I thought I'd put a cloth against it and kind of tap it in with a hammer, but it still chipped it. Even when I had a cloth on it, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, it definitely sticks out further, but no big deal. This model doesn't have tilt on it, so that is what it is. Um, as I turn the steering wheel, and you can see the engine turning, and it's already a whole lot smoother and easier to turn. All right, give me just a second, I'll show you underneath. So that's the back side of it. And that's the two hoses. So basically the uh, little fittings there, you tighten those in first and you can spin them around and change the direction of which way they go. And then you take the brass fittings and just tighten them on there. And both sides have O-rings, so you don't really have to over tighten it that much. So we should be good. And then those lines run all the way down there you can see into the floor and it has that little rubber boot over it. So that's the new hydraulic steering system by Baystar.